For this example, I want to create another table called create table. numbers table there we're going to have one field called sums of data type integer and then we're going to work with stored procedures that are going to interact with a field of number type so we're now going to create something very similar to our last example where there's going to be a caller and where there's going to be a called so I'm going to be using my comments in SQL called and caller. So in the call stored procedure, we're going to call this one create procedure. The name of the procedure will going to be sum underscore nums. It will going to take two in parameters and one out parameter. All I'm doing over here is, in that stored procedure, it will not going to insert any data. It will simply set the value of RST with, to the sum of num1 plus num2. That's all it is doing. So this kind of a stored procedure is a good example of when you want to create a stored procedure whose job is to take the values and produce an output and pack the output back to the caller. And the caller will have the business logic. So now let me create the procedure. Call sum. Which we're going to receive two parameters of type integer. And they will both be something that we're going to be passing into the body of this one. So that's why there are two in parameters. Language SQL, you begin and you end. Within the code block, since I need to pass three parameters into the body of called, which are num1, num2, and rst, two of them I already have, one of them I have to now declare. So this is how you can declare an integer parameter, uh, integer variable. <coughs> You can now make a call to sum underscore nums and pass all three of them in the correct order. And when you return, when you get a result back, you will going to take this and put it in the numbers table, the value of RST. So all you're doing in this stored procedure is you're making a call to some nums, passing two values over, getting a result back in RST, and then you are inserting RST in numbers table. So a good way for you to be able to create a stored procedure which will do computations for you will return a result of the computations that allows you to store that value in a table. So we're doing what simpler example, but you can take it to as complicated level as you can. So once it's a success, you make a call to call sum. Let's pass two positive values. That's one call. Then you pass two negative values. That's another call. And then you pass a negative value and a positive value, and that's the third call. So make three calls, and then check the data in the numbers table it should have three inputs, three records. 